Hi gang! In this video, we're going to create stripe patterns. If you'd like to see more patterns, give the video a like and let me know what kind of patterns you'd like to see in the comments. We're going to start with the basic black and white Barbie swimsuit stripe. Grab your rectangle tool and draw a rectangle. We are going to then copy that rectangle. So I'm going to grab my black arrow. I'm going to click on the rectangle, hold my Alt and Shift key, and drag a copy till it just snaps into place right next to the first one. Now, in order to get this to snap, you need to have a few settings in the proper place. So up here in view, you want to make sure that your smart guides are on and that snap to point is on as well, and then it will function the way mine is functioning. So let's take one of these and we will fill it with black. I'm going to take the other one and make sure it's filled with white. And just so we can see this a little bit better, I'm going to move this into the gray area. Now, the other really important thing is that we remove all of the strokes. If we leave strokes on, we're going to end up with a grid pattern instead of a seamless stripe. So I'll select both of my stripes, go up to my stroke, and make sure it is set to none. And now we're ready to turn it into a pattern. I'm going to open up my swatches, take this stripe and drag it right into this big empty area in the bottom of my swatches panel. And that's it. We just made our first stripe pattern. We'll grab the rectangle tool, draw a nice big rectangle, make sure we're in fill and not stroke, click on our new swatch, and now we've got black and white stripes. Now, if you want to see them diagonally, we can rotate them really easily. Double click on the rotate tool. We're going to set this to 45 because I want my stripes on a diagonal, but here's the important part. Turn off transform objects so that it only rotates the pattern and not the entire shape. We'll click OK, and there we've got diagonal black and white stripes. I'm going to slide this out of the way and let's make a pinstripe. For a pinstripe, we're going to create a rectangle and let's fill it with a color. I'm going to copy, paste in front, and then I'm going to take this rectangle on top and, oops, control Z, and I'm going to squeeze it in and make a much smaller rectangle. And we'll go ahead and fill that with a color. And I should probably zoom in a little bit so we can see this last one. And we're going to do it one more time. I'm going to copy, control or command C, paste in front, control or command F, and then we're going to squish this stripe in even more and give that a color fill. Now, the important thing is these all are the same height. None of them are extending outside of the box. When I'm doing pinstripes like this, I also like to align everything center just to give myself a good visual of what the overall pattern is likely to look like. And in this case, I think it's a little wide, so I'm going to smush it in all a little bit more. And now we'll select it. I'll drag it into my swatches panel. We'll zoom back out and let's fill this with our new stripe. Now you'll notice it filled on a diagonal and that's because I had recently rotated the black and white stripe on a diagonal and when you click once on a new pattern, it takes on the settings of the shape that you filled it in. If I want my stripe the way I created it, I can click one more time on the swatch and it will return it to the way I actually created the stripe. All right, let's do a candy stripe type of stripe. I am going to draw a rectangle, the width of one of my stripes. And let's see, I'm going to use these colors. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to select my stripe. I'm going to hold my Alt and my Shift key. And I'm going to drag it just a little bit away from the first stripe. I want to see a little bit of white space in between. And now I'm going to duplicate that. Control or Command D for duplicate. So T, four, five for my five stripes and I'm going to do one extra so it'll be easier for me to align everything. So let's color my stripes. My first one will be pink, my second will be yellow, and you'll notice I'm clicking and then clicking to fill, but I can also click on a color and drag it to my stripe so I can fill things that much faster. All right, 
So I've got all my colors. Now I need to take this last one here, the one we're not using. I'm gonna go ahead and um, get rid of the fill on this. I'm just gonna take the outer edge and I'm gonna drag it all the way so it lines up with the edge of the first stripe. And now I've got a perfect repeat. Everything's at the same height and there's the amount of space between these stripes is also right here on the edge. So now we'll select this whole thing. We'll drag it on in here again and now we can fill this with our candy stripe. One last one. We're gonna do one that's all kind of random sizes. So one more time, we're gonna draw a rectangle. Let's hit D for default. Now I'm gonna take this rectangle Actually, let me make this a little bit smaller and we'll zoom in closer. That's better. Okay, we're gonna grab the rectangle tool and I'm gonna make a bunch of rectangles for my stripes. Now in this case, uh, I'm making sure that I'm going over the edge. So we'll just continue making some rectangles here. One thing I like to do when I'm making stripes is maybe make a small rectangle. And like we did before, I will Alt, Shift, Drag, and then duplicate so I can get a few stripes of the same size equally spaced. Let's do maybe another one that's kind of fat and this and this and, whoops, Control Z, we don't wanna rotate them and maybe another thinner one. Well, how about that? All right, there are all my stripes, but we need to have all of these edges that are sticking out. They need to go away. So I'm gonna select all of these. We're gonna go up to Pathfinder and click on Pathfinder Divide, which is the one in the lower left corner, and then right click, Ungroup. Now with the black arrow, we can just click and drag right over all these pieces sticking out on top and delete them, and do the same on the bottom, delete them, and now we get to color in our stripes and create our pattern. So just like I did before, I'm gonna click on the first stripe, grab a color. I can take a color and drag it back, click here, click and drag. The next one, let's see, let's do the dark red. And how about maybe we'll do the light blue here and the skinny one, the dark blue. Whoops, that's not the one I was going for. I want this little skinny one in between. Sometimes you gotta zoom in closer so that you can make your selections. All right, let's get the dark blue and we'll make this one dark blue and we'll make this one light blue. Let's do another yellow. Let's make this big one pink. You can see I prepared a few color groups in advance just so that I wouldn't spend too much time here trying to decide on colors, which I can definitely get lost in from time to time. All right, let's see. Maybe we'll have I'll leave a white one in here. We'll put a turquoise over here. What's this looking like? Let's do this pinkish red one. And we'll leave that one white also, I think. That looks good. All right, now once again, it's really important to delete all the strokes. And this time I think I'm gonna make it with the strokes just so you can see what happens if you forget. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this in. And now if we take a look at our pattern fill, we get this with these horrible lines going through it. And that's what happens if you leave the stroke on. So I'm gonna select this. We're gonna go up here to strokes and we're gonna change that to no stroke. And we will go ahead and drag this back in one more time. And now if I fill this with my pattern, you will see a beautiful seamless stripe repeat. Let me show you one more trick. I have a way of taking these patterns from flat to something really cool and textural. And we do it using the appearance panel. So take a look at this stripe now. I just added kind of a twill weave to it and it looks much more richer and much more textured. So let me show you how you can do this. We've already created a black and white stripe pattern, but it's kind of large and yes, we could scale it down, but let's just make one 
a smaller size. So I'm going to take the black and white stripe that we did and I'm going to squish it down so it's much, much smaller. And I'm going to take this and let's go back to our swatches and we'll go ahead and drag this into the swatches panel. Now we're going to select the shape that we filled with our stripe and we're going to open the appearance panel. And you can see in the appearance panel that currently this square that I have selected has no stroke and it has our stripe fill. We're going to add a second fill to this. So we're going to go down to the bottom and click on the second icon, which is adding another fill. And by default, it adds another copy of the same fill that's already on it. We're going to change that to the newest stripe we just created, which is this black and white stripe right here. And you can see it covers everything up. That's okay. It's a little bit big still. So we're going to double click on the scale tool while this is still selected so that we scale the correct pattern. We're going to double click in the scale tool. We're going to scale this down to 50%, but we want to make sure that we scale the pattern and not the object. So we're going to uncheck that and click OK. Now we need to rotate this. 45 degrees like we did before. So we'll double click on rotate. We'll type in 45. And again, we want to rotate the pattern, not the object. Click OK. Now we're going to change the blend mode so we can see through this to the stripe pattern below it. To do that, you're going to click on opacity. And in here, we're going to change the layer blend mode. And these might be new to you if you're only an Illustrator user, but if you use Photoshop, hopefully these are familiar. They do exist in Photoshop. We are going to grab multiply. And you can see now we can see the stripes overlaid. Now there are some other options besides multiply, but multiply will make the dark stripe show up. The other two that often work very well are overlay, but in this case, I'm not really liking how it looks. And soft light sometimes works really well too. But with these colors, I think the way to go is definitely going to be multiply. Although possibly darken could work, but we'll stick with multiply. But it's still too heavy. So we're going to go to the opacity and we're going to lower the opacity until we like the balance. And we want just enough to add a little texture without being overly distracting. And in this case, 17% seems to do the trick. And now we've got a pattern with texture in it. Now I want the stroke on this to be black. So I'm going to go ahead and change my stroke to black. And if I'm happy with the stroke weight, the color, all of this stuff, what I'm going to do now is go to my graphic styles and click new graphic style. So now whenever I want to use this particular fabric with this added detail of it to give it texture, I can use my graphic style to do it instead of having to go through this little song and dance again. So you'll see I'm going to hit D for default. Let's let's deselect everything. I will hit D for default. I'm going to go ahead and draw a box on my page. And you'll notice that if I go to my swatches and I click on the pattern fill, I get the flat fill just like before. But if I go to my graphic styles and I click on the graphic style, I get the full fill that's got my flat pattern along with the added texture. So there is your little lesson on stripes. I hope you learned something new. I hope you'll come back for more videos. Please subscribe to my channel, like my video, and let me know what you thought in the comments below. See you next time.